Are you thinking about going on testosterone replacement therapy and really want to know what you're getting into? Maybe you're worried about side effects like prostate health, blood pressure, and other problems. Maybe you just want to make sure you get a proper screening before you go on testosterone replacement therapy. My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, we're going beyond basic health to share with you some of the problems with testosterone replacement therapy, some of the adverse reactions some people have when they're on it. With increased prostate saturation of testosterone, you're going to get more growth or expansion of the prostate. So you may see a change in your PSA with that tissue expansion. And that's not exponential. Some of the things to think about when you're considering testosterone replacement therapy. As I said, my name is Dr. Taranella. And in this video, like all my other videos, I make these to help you go beyond basic health to give you some more nuanced understanding of different topics, but it's not tailored specifically to you. So please read this disclaimer before we get into the video details. So before going on testosterone replacement therapy or TRT, you may want to fully understand what you're getting into the so-called problems with testosterone replacement therapy. So in this video, we'll cover some of the side effects or adverse reactions that can come. This is more so to make you aware of some of the downsides, not necessarily to dissuade you from taking it as it can and does have a lot of upside and benefits. So one problem with TRT is that many other health issues go overlooked. You may go into a clinic and do a general health screening, get tested for testosterone and maybe a few other things and you find out that you're low and then you get put on TRT moving forward and maybe you miss a lot of things. Now, the counterexample is also true. You can have low testosterone going for blood work and told your testosterone is normal, even though it's two points away from being on the low range. In the same visit, you might get told you have high cholesterol, get put on a statin and an antidepressant and get sent on your way. And so you're on those moving forward. Neither of these situations are very good, by the way. And testosterone replacement therapy is not something you should be dissuaded to using, but you want to make sure it's actually treating the underlying issue and that the problem couldn't be solved by something a little more simple or non-invasive. There are also long-term effects on your natural testosterone production and your spermatozoa production. Short-term, say one to three years, most people on testosterone replacement therapy levels won't have any adverse reactions when they stop taking testosterone, meaning they'll still be able to produce it after they stop. Of course, there is some variation between different doctors and clinics on the dose that you're going to be put on. But if you're getting more than 200 milligrams per week, chances are it's a little bit much and you may have more of an issue producing natural levels once you come off of that. Even in the case that you're taking a replacement therapy dose, not everyone is going to rebound in their fertility and testosterone production after one to three years. In my experience, though, most people do rebound this even without trying that hard. And to ensure that you do rebound in the production, you can do things like taking HCG, taking Clomid, or just taking periodic breaks from the testosterone. How long it takes to come back and all the finer details, you can find that in other videos that I've done on stopping testosterone and fertility videos as well in conjunction with TRT. If these things don't really matter to you and you're just going to plan on being on it, on going for the rest of your life, th that really shouldn't be too much of a concern for you. Now, some of the other problems with testosterone replacement therapy have to do with side effects and adverse effects. So let's discuss them a little bit. With testosterone replacement therapy, there really aren't a lot of long-term permanent side effects to be concerned with, especially if you're doing replacement therapy and are under the supervision of a doctor that's somewhat attentive to what's going on with your lab work and with your symptoms. But even with doctor supervision, some of these things that we're about to discuss can and definitely do happen to a lot of people, but not necessarily to everyone. So the first thing is increased estrogen. So estrogen, and in particular estradiol, is a natural byproduct of testosterone, and it's going to go up when you're on testosterone replacement therapy. Now, estrogens are not necessarily bad, but when it becomes excessively high, you're going to want to do something about it and prevent it from becoming a problem. When estrogens become too high, you can have some increased breast tissue swelling, 
sensitive nipples, feel more emotional like crying hot flashes and different things like this. Another problem with testosterone replacement therapy in terms of adverse reactions or side effects is increased red blood cell production, rises in hematocrit. This is called erythrocytosis or secondary polycythemia. TRT can and does increase your red blood cell production and as a result, your hematocrit goes up. Hematocrit is basically the amount of red blood cells to serum in the tube. So if this is a tube, you know, you should have about 50% red blood cells and not more than that. When it goes above 50%, we typically recommend you donate blood. The reason, because it can lead to increased risk of blood clots, and that's something you definitely don't want. So if you're on TRT, that's one of the things that comes with it is you may be needing to donate blood on a regular basis. That takes time. You got to get stuck by a needle. So it's one thing to consider before actually going on testosterone replacement therapy. Another thing to think about is with sleep. Now, a lot of times when you go on testosterone replacement therapy, sleep does improve. In some cases, if it's super high, some people will report disturbed sleep or waking up earlier than they want to. But sleep apnea is another thing. If you already have sleep apnea or on the edge of fitting the diagnostic criteria for having sleep apnea, testosterone replacement can definitely push you into having more sleep apnea. Now, some studies do show that this is just a temporary phenomenon and that the increased apnea events eventually will revert back to the pre-testosterone levels. Not all studies agree on this, and it's something that you definitely want to have on your radar, especially because this can worsen the red blood cell production and erythrocytosis. Another problem with TRT or adverse reaction that people report and can happen, I've seen in my practice, it's not as common, but you can have increases in blood pressure, palpitations, and anxiety. This is less common side effect or adverse reaction to testosterone replacement therapy but I definitely have seen it in my patients. And for the most part, it seems to come down to a dose-dependent phenomenon, meaning as your dose goes up, you're more likely to experience that once it gets above a certain threshold. So that's another reason to have someone that's attentive to your actual levels of testosterone and be able to guide you through that process when you're going on TRT and staying on TRT. And the last thing I had to discuss with regard to testosterone replacement therapy is with regard to problems with TRT or adverse reactions to testosterone replacement therapy is increased PSA or prostate size. Now, when you go on testosterone replacement therapy, typically your testosterone levels are starting out low. Hopefully, the reason you're going on it is because you have low levels. And when your testosterone levels are low, the amount of testosterone that's getting to your prostate is also low. So it's not fully saturated with testosterone. And as those androgen levels increase, the amount going to the prostate tissue also increases. And with the increased prostate saturation of testosterone, you're going to get more growth or expansion of the prostate. It's just going to be a little bit. So you may see a change in your PSA with that tissue expansion. And that's not exponential. So it's just going to increase and then pretty much stay at that level. This is a benign expansion of the prostate tissue. It's not because you have prostate cancer. If you do have prostate cancer in there and you don't know it yet, well, that can also happen with going on testosterone replacement therapy is the prostate can still expand and grow and help the prostate cancer grow in some instances, not whole instances. Testosterone replacement therapy is thought to be very safe with regard to prostate health, and it does not cause prostate cancer. That's been pretty well, thoroughly vetted, but if you do have prostate cancer present, you probably don't wanna be starting testosterone replacement therapy, and if your PSA starts to really increase, that may be something you need to look into. And so if you're someone that is already sort of already having prostate issues, having high PSA, this is something you need to be aware of ahead of time. Doesn't mean you can't take testosterone. You just have to be more cognizant of what's going on with that PSA value. PSA is a very crude measurement of what's going on with your prostate, but it is helpful in monitoring what's going on there over time. So the more samples of the PSA we have, the easier it is to understand what's actually happening inside the prostate without doing more tests. So there may be a few other things that I miss, but these are the most common things that come up 
when considering testosterone replacement therapy. If you have more to add to this, definitely drop it in the comment section. As I said, it's a very safe, effective treatment with not a lot of downside risk. It's at least worthy of a treatment trial if you've ruled out all the other possibilities causing your symptoms. Certainly beats a lot of the medication options as far as side effect profile and potentials. Downsides, when you compare it to the other options for treating like depression, low motivation, and erectile issues. If you're someone that doesn't really have a lot of symptoms or health issues, you may want to look to try and solve those health problems if they're more minor through a more detailed health screening. What does a detailed health screening look like prior to going on TRT? We'll cover that in the next video. That's all I had on this topic, the problem with testosterone replacement therapy. If you do have questions on anything or wanted to add some comments, feel free to share your comments in the comment section. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.